Good morning, welcome back. Simon Says Farms and it's Friday. It's an important Friday because it's the moment we've all been waiting for for a while now. What do we do with Winnie? Winnie, our goat, got sick, extremely sick, a couple weeks ago. Ended up having to go to the emergency hospital. Tufts spent 11 days there. She almost died, like really, really close. It, it was bad and in the end it was worms which is weird because we tested for worms and the test came back negative. She showed no signs. Her poop was perfect. Other, her eyelids were white, we knew that, but her poop was perfect. Her temperature was high and it was just a very confusing situation having the test come back negative. So now our heads are scratching. What do we do? What do we do about this worm issue? Do we open this back pasture? We have never used this pasture. We built it, it's behind House of Pie here, and it's just a bunch of grown in, let's say foliage, like whatever it is. We don't know what grass that is, what that is. It's clover, it's weeds, it's prickers, it's a whole bunch of stuff. So today, Friday, we have the art vet coming out. We're doing a consultation. We're doing a consulting session. We're talking about everything from herd management to field rotation, do we do that? Do we put some goats out here for a month and then move them over there for a month? Because in House of Pie here, we can do that. We can separate. We have a front pasture and a back. In Cassie's Castle, we don't have that. And technically, if we add the front and the back pasture together on House of Pie, it's bigger than Cassie's Castle, I think. It's very, very close, possibly bigger. And the grass over here grows way longer, but there's only seven goats in here now. We have about five or six more, roughly that should be moving over. When do we do that? Do we muck out Cassie's castle? We want it, we didn't want to clean everything. Like let's muck out, let's make everything perfect for when the vet shows up. No, we want real life. We know we do it right. We might do it different than some other farmers. There's some that do deep letter methods, some that have dry lots, some that muck out every day like a horse. But today's the day we go over all that. We take blood work, we send out poop samples, I think Liz is actually going to drive her poop sample all the way back to Tufts. So we're comparing apples to apples again to make sure everything's going good for Winnie so she could start getting back in the herd. During this time, while the vet's here, for those of you that watch up live, which will be right about the time this video posted on Friday, we will go dark. No audio, no video, no nothing. We want the vet and everybody to be able to walk around and talk freely and not worry about being watched or heard or anything like that. I'll let you guys chat away. We'll probably drop the Winnie camera, will come down completely because I do have to use that camera soon for Q&A. We're working on setting up a Q&A for Sunday. You might only already know that by now. I don't know if I programmed it, but we're gonna do a Q&A because there's a lot of questions. You know, a lot of questions going on out there. Who's pregnant, who's not, who got bred to who, how, you know, what are we looking like for kidding season? What's the plan for House of Pie? What's the plan for the, I mean, there's just so many, what are, what's going on with all the puppies? There's just so many, so many questions around. So today's the day, today's that Friday that some of those answers all start getting, at least the process starts, right? We take the blood work, we send it off, we see how, how, uh, Winnie is doing with her blood count, with her red blood cells in her, was it potassium, pot phosphorus, phosphate, phosphorus, I think they're both the same, whatever it was. See how she's doing with that medication, that supplement, we call it a medication, but really it's a mineral supplement. Does she still need to be on it? One of the things that did move up, no matter what, to the top of my list now, is to build another one of these feeders. This exact same feeder we built here, where you can't see it. This is our big feeder, right? Right, buddy? This is our big feeder. We gotta build this exact same feeder. Thank you. And put it all the way down there in the back. That'll create, I mean, it'll be hard to fill it because you have to walk all the way through to fill it, but in the end, it'll make great room for them to be able to eat from both feeders because we'll go from seven goats to almost, uh, no, six goats in here to almost 12 overnight. So they're definitely gonna need a double feeder system. There is a possibility, this middle wall you see behind me here that goes all the way to the ceiling, this middle wall is not a load bearing wall, not at all. The whole load to this building is right here above my head and all the way on the other side. The way the building's designed, these trusses go all the way through that wall. So that wall is just there for show, which means, I think I've said it before, from this beam over, 
can become indoors. So we could close this whole side in where that gate is, close that in and close this in as well. But what we would actually do is put a door there so then we can decide, do the goats come out this door and go to the front pasture or do the goats go out that door and go to the back pasture? which gives us another 24 by 12 right here. And all this would come down and get actually moved out to here is literally what would happen. All this would come down those two doors, all that wood would just get moved out to this outer wall here onto this header. We'd have to build a sill plate, basically a board that goes from here to there to connect it to. So we'd move that wall out, build a wall here, and they pick up almost close to double the square footage they have right now currently indoors. So that might be on the, that's one of the conversations we'll be talking to Kara and the team about basically. Oh, ooh, just, you just kicked me, you moron. You just got me. You jumped on me. I don't know if you guys saw that. I don't know. Oh, I don't know if it was a wide enough angle I'm gonna leave now. I have to bring in more dirt. That's an ankle breaker type of hole right there. It's a rain thing, I guess, or the goats are digging at it. I don't know. Was that you that jumped on me? No, it was you, it was you. So yeah, that's one of the, maybe some soil samples, working on all that. Do we, do we, uh, with this back pasture that we just talked about, let me throw some hay. Sorry, filming and working all at the same time. So this back pasture where I started the video, do we let them just graze on it? Just let them out there, let them forage, let them, Pick around. We know that there's nothing out there poisonous. There's actually, Kevin and I in a video a couple weeks ago, took down all the, most of all, the plants that had the, uh, the beads on the beads. Oh my gosh, the berries on it. We took down all of those. I think there's two left. We have to take down a couple more. And then once those are gone, that pasture is ready for them to go to. Or do we not let them out there? And do we bring in all the equipment to till it all up, flip it all over, bring in some seed, plant a real like hay pasture that we don't hay? I don't know. So for those of you that remember the whole Winnie Wednesday with the big fundraiser, that's what's going on. So we paid for the vet, that bill's taken care of and done. Thank you so, so, so much. The leftover finances are being saved right now for this conversation. What do we do? Do we have to bring in soil? Do we have to flip it? Do we have to put better drainage with that we've talked about for years so the water doesn't flood the barn? Was it that big flood that bloomed? Because, I mean, that flood was bad. Do we have to do that project? That's like a $3,000 project that we've been putting off. So it's just, you know, we don't want to rush. We don't wanna do it wrong. We wanna do it right. So we might have nine years of goat experience and we might search YouTube and look at what everybody else does, but our vet has, has a cumulative, the amount of hours she spends at goat farms or really any farms, her knowledge and her partner's knowledge, the two vets that are coming down, Lindsay and Kara. I mean, it's just a wealth of information. That's what you pay for when you hire, oh, sorry, a consultant. And that's pretty much what we did for this meeting. So we'll see what they say. They've said it before. And uh, I'm assuming we're not gonna get fired as customers. We have one of the nicest setups ever that they've like ever seen at any goat farm. It's like living in a, you know, in a retreat. The question is why are the goats getting worms what's going on and it might just be nothing we can control we might be overthinking it they might say nope you're wasting your money don't do it don't rip the paddock up don't flip it it's literally just this is what happens the life cycle it's eight years of pooping on the same pasture the only option is to move goats off and how do we do that we don't have a third barn we don't have enough room to shut down cassie's castle for a year and let that place just all the worms die off and so I don't know, these are just rumors, not rumors, just hypothesizing, thinking, whatever. So that's today, that's Friday, that's what's going on. It's a, a goat meeting day, so if the cameras are black for a while, we'll just put private. 
you know, I'll put some screen up. I don't know what I'll do. And hopefully by the time this video cam comes out, you know of what's going on with Q&A. If not, that information will come soon too. So have a great Friday and we will talk to you guys again tomorrow.